Hi everyone. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello. Hello everyone. Welcome to another story time of summer reading. Say I got my new apron. It says imagine your story. What are we going to read about this week? Remember what we've been talking about? Knights and castles and dragons. The Sunflower Sword by Mark Sperring and Miriam Latimer. Hmm. Knights did used to have swords, didn't they? This is an Anderson Press book. Once there was a land filled with fire and smoke and endless fighting, where knights fought dragons and dragons fought knights, and that was the way it had always been. In this land there lived a knight who wanted to be big like the other knights and fight like the other knights and have a sword like the other knights. But his mother said he couldn't. Why ever would you want a sword, she asked. Well, to wish and swoosh in the air, smiled the little knight. Hmm, said his mother. And she popped off to find a sunflower. Well, sighed the little knight. I suppose, I suppose I could pretend it was a sword. And then he whooshed it, and he swooshed it, just to see how well it whooshed and swooshed. Whoosh and swooshed, very well. But, said the little knight, it won't be any good for fighting dragons. No, sighed his mother. I don't suppose it will be. But we'll keep it anyway. So the little knight trudged up Dragon Hill, the only place where the biggest, bravest knights ever went. And he played happily all day long. The sunflower sword swung this way and that, and slew not one, not two, but three imaginary dragons. But suddenly the air crackled with heat and the smoke it billowed all about. And there stood something full of fire and flames and a fight waiting to be fought. What do you think it is? <gasps> A real dragon! Looks like that dragon wants to eat his sunflower. The little, little knight had no choice. It was too late to run. So he whooshed and he swooshed his sunflower sword. It cut through the air like a fine silver blade, but suddenly, as it swung near him, the dragon saw it for what it was. And, what do you think the dragon did? He reached out to take it. Could it be, thought the dragon, this little knight had climbed to the top of the dragon hill to offer me a flower? Could it be, thought the little knight, a dragon might not be so fearsome at all? Then the little knight and the dragon looked at each other, and they both began to smile. So that's how it happened. As simply as that, 
From then on, they met each day to play on Dragon Hill. It was much better to play games than fighting. Soon the word spread far and near of how an enemy had become a friend and how the land might become a peaceful place. One by one the knights laid down their swords, climbed to the top of Dragon Hill, and waited while the little knight's mother looked on and smiled. What do all those knights have in their hands? They don't have a sword anymore. They all have sunflowers. Because they decided it was better to be friends with the dragons than fight with them. That's a good idea. Let's see. Should we sing a song about a king and some blackbirds? You might know this song. Maybe it's a very, very old song. Maybe your mom or dad sings it to you. Sing a song of six pence a pocket full of rye, four and twenty black birds baked in a pie. When the pie was open, the birds began to sing. Now wasn't that a dainty dish to set before the king? The king was in his counting house, counting out his money. The queen was in the parlor, eating bread and honey. Mm, that sounds good. The maid was in the garden, hanging out the clothes. When down came a blackbird and picked off her nose. There was such a commotion that little Jenny ran. She flew into the garden and put it back on again. It's kind of a silly little song. I think we probably have time for one more book. There's a little knight. Again, a little knight in this book. This book was written, written by John Agee. It's called The Wall in the Middle of the Book. And this is a Penguin Young Reader's book. There is a wall. Oh, in this book you have to pay really close attention to the pictures. There is a wall in the middle of the book. And that is a good thing. The wall protects this side of the book. From the other side of the book. Looks like those animals are trying to see on top of the wall. This side of the book is safe. Uh oh, what's happening on that side of the book? The other side is not. Maybe because of the big animals? But what's happening over here? The most dangerous thing on the other side of this book is an ogre. If that ogre ever caught me, he'd eat me up. That's why I'm glad there's a wall in the middle of this book and that I'm on this side of it. Wait a second. What's going on? Did you watch the water come up? The ogre is listening. This is not supposed to happen on this side of the wall. Oh, the water went so far, he fell in. It's over his head. Can you see the hand of the, the ogre? It's a good thing he's big. Oh, wow! 
Thank you so much. Oh no! Now I'm on the other side of the book. And you're the ogre. The one who wants to eat me. Like that fish is eating all the little fish. <laughs> I'm actually a very nice ogre. And this side of the book, it's fantastic. Come on, I'll show you around. Did you see what was some coming on the other side? He's not sure he wants to go with that ogre. He's not sure that ogre's not going to eat him. But if he had stayed on the other side, he might have got eaten by a big fish. Yep. Wait, wait, wait for me! Guess it's not so bad on the other side of the book, is it? Good thing that ogre was friendly. Let's see. Let's, let's do one more rhyme. I have some kings here. One, two, three, four, five. You ready? I'll hold them in my fingers. Some of you might remember this. I did it last week. Five kings were sitting in the castle. One went out to find the queen. Oh my, what a hassle. Four kings were eating at the table, but one went out into the field to find his dog named Sable. You hear the rhyming words in there? Now how many are there? One, two, three. Three kings were sitting on their thrones, one went out to find the dragon to feed him some delicious bones. Two kind kings were putting on their crowns. One dropped his and it fell down to the ground. One kind king went to the keep. He climbed up into his bed where he fell fast asleep. I like that one. It has numbers and rhyming words. Princess Pigsty by Cornelia Funk. This is a scholastic book. Drusilla, Rosalinda, and Isabella were real princesses. Their beautiful clothes filled 30 walk-in closets. They had footmen to blow their noses for them and ladies-in-waiting to tidy up their rooms, hang up their clothes, and polish their crowns until they were shiny. Every morning three teachers taught them royal behavior, how to sit on a throne without fidgeting, how to curtsy without falling over, how to yawn with your mouth closed, and how to smile for a whole hour without taking a break. Six footmen swept up the crumbs that fell from their plates, and six ladies-in-waiting ladies made sure they didn't get the tiniest scratch on them while they were playing. The princesses didn't feed their ponies and pet monkeys, oh no. They had three stable hands to do that. They even had three servants whose job it was to carry three cushions around so that their royal behinds always had something soft to sit on. What more could a princess wish for? Our children must be the happiest children in the world, said their mother. But Isabella the youngest princess, wasn't happy, not even a little bit. 
Every night she sat by the window and she looked up at the moon and she sighed. One morning Isabella jumped out of bed and shouted in such a loud voice that the whole castle woke up. I am tired of being a princess, she screamed. It's boring, boring, boring. Her older sister looked up from their feather pillows in surprise. I want to get dirty, cried Isabella, bouncing around on the bed. I want to blow my own nose. I don't want to smile all the time. I want to make my own sandwiches. I don't want to have my hair curled ever again. I do not want to be a princess anymore. And with that, she took her crown and she threw it out the window. Splash! It landed in the goldfish pond. Oh, there'll be trouble now, said Drusilla and rang the bell. The door flew open and in marched six servants. May we ready your majesties for breakfast, purred the footman. Rosalinda and Drusilla sat down in front of their mirrors right away, but Isabella scrambled quick as a flash and she hid under her bed. Your highness, cried the footman, I beg you to come out from under there. No, I don't want to get dressed, Isabella called out. I don't want to have my hair curled. Yuckety yuck. I can't stand it. I'll wash myself in the fish pond. Yourself, cried the footman in horror. In the fish pond? Goodness gracious. And the head footman immediately called for the king. Isabella! thundered the king in a loud voice, so loud that his wig slipped out of place. Come out from under that bed immediately. No, replied Isabella. I don't want to be a princess anymore. I'd rather starve down here. Pull her out, ordered the king. Isabella pinched, and she scratched, and she kicked. But it was no good. The footmen pulled her out by her feet, and they dressed her in her princess clothing. Where is your crown? asked the king sternly. She threw it in the fish pond, said Rosalinda. I most certainly did, said Isabella. That thing gives me a headache. And you can't climb trees in this stupid dress. I want to wear pants. Princesses don't climb trees, thundered the king. Well, that's just it, cried Isabella. Princesses can't do anything fun. Princesses don't even get to pick their nose. Princesses just stand around looking pretty. Yuck! I'm not going to be a princess anymore. Fish your crown out of the pond this very minute, cried the king. I will not, Isabella shouted. I'm never going to put that crown on ever again. The king stamped his foot. Take her to the kitchens. She can wash the dishes, clean the pans, peel the onions, scrub the ovens until she feels like fetching her crown from the fish pond. So the footman took Isabella to the kitchen and she peeled potatoes and polished pans and plucked pheasants and whipped the cream that her sisters liked to eat for breakfast. And after three days, her father sent for her. She was doing a lot of chores in the kitchen, wasn't she? Isabella, he sighed, you stink of onions. So what, said Isabella, did you know that cream is made from milk? No, I didn't know that, groaned the king. 
Now will you fetch your crown from the fish pond? No, said Isabella. What for? Isabella, cried the king, tearing both his wig and his crown from his head. Off to the pigsty with you. So the footman took Isabella to the pigsty. That's where the pigs live. And Isabella helped feed the pigs and clean up the pigsty. And the pigs nuzzled against her with their pink snouts and Isabella scratched their bristly chins. And after three days, her father sent for her again. She doesn't look like a princess right now, does she? All dressed up in her princess outfit. Isabella, he groaned, you look a mess. And she stinks too, cried her sisters. Did you know that pigs eat potatoes, said Isabella, pulling a piece of straw out of her hair, and that they're incredibly smart? Excuse me. Isabella, cried the king, for the last time, will you fetch your crown from the fish pond, put on a pretty dress, and comb your hair? No, I will not, said Isabella, but I would like to help out some more in the pigsty. Ugh, cried her sisters. Holding their nose, they said, we don't want to share a room with her anymore. Well, I'd rather sleep in the straw anyway, said Isabella. So she fetched her favorite doll and her blanket, and she settled down back in the pig's thigh. When night came and the moon shone over the uh, castle, the king crept out of his palace. And he went to the fish pond, and he fished out his youngest daughter's crown. And then he went to find her in the pigsty. Oh, my little daughter, he said. And he sat down next to her in the straw. You are dirty, and your hair feels like straw. But you look so happy. Yes, Daddy, cried Isabella. I'm happier than I've ever been before in my entire life. That's good, the king sighed. Here is your crown. May you may do as you wish with it as long as you put it back in the ca you come back in the castle, because I've missed you. Well, I suppose I could wear it now and then, Isabella said. Perhaps when I'm feeling feeding the chickens or pickling blackberries. Did you know that you can make jam out of blackberries? No, I did not know that, said the king, but one of these days you can show me how it's done. And he gave his daughter a big fat kiss on her dirty cheek, and she kissed him on his big fat nose, and they walked back into the castle hand in hand. Isabella still sleeps in the pigsty quite a lot. She gave her fancy clothes to the cook's daughter, and as for curling her hair, Isabella never let anyone curl her hair ever, ever again. That was a pretty neat book about a princess. She was a strong-willed princess, wasn't she? She knew what she liked and what she didn't. I think we're almost out of time. Should we sing our goodbye song? And I'll see you next week. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you next week.